Hello everyone, my name is Mikio. In this video, I will explain how to use the REST API to access FTX in Python so that you can build your trading program. FTX is an exchange where users can trade various digital assets such as cryptocurrencies, tokenized stocks, and derivatives. Founded in 2019, it is a relatively new exchange, but it is ranked as the third top cryptocurrency spot exchange after Binance and Coinbase on CoinMarketCap at the time of recording. FTX provides a well-documented API which includes REST, WebSocket and FIX and low trading fees, making it an excellent platform for algorithmic traders. In addition, it publishes a sample client code on GitHub to use the REST API in Python, so it is straightforward to build trading programs in Python. In this video, we will use Jupyter Notebook to explore the REST API. We'll also use some packages such as Pandas and Plotly. So let's set up the environment first. Go to the terminal and create a virtual environment first and activate it. Then install necessary packages. Create a file called .env in the current directory, which we'll update later. To use the FTX API, you need to create a free account. Go to ftx.com and click on the register button on the top right hand corner and fill in the necessary information. I already have an account so I won't go through the process to create an account, but it is a straightforward process. But you must go through the KYC process or identity verification process before starting trading. FTX will give you all the necessary information during the registration process. Once you've created your account, go to the account settings page and select API on the left hand side menu. Click on the create API key button. New API key and API secret are shown. Open the file .mp, which we created earlier and copy and paste the API key and API secret values. After checking that the values are correctly saved in the file, Close the API key pane. FTX publishes sample code to access API using Python, C++ and Go on their GitHub repository. We are going to use a Python REST API client sample code in this video for demonstration purposes. Click on the row button and copy the URL.
Then download the file from the command line like this. You can also copy the file to the clipboard by clicking the copy raw contents button and create a new file client.py and paste the contents from the clipboard. Now we are ready to start using the REST API. We will see how to get both current and historical market data. Then as an optional step, we will plot the historical data. First, start the Jupyter Notebook from the terminal. Your default web browser will automatically open the Jupyter Notebook homepage, but if it doesn't, open the URL shown in the Jupyter Notebook command log here. Create a new notebook on the Jupyter Notebook homepage by clicking the New button and selecting Python 3 from the drop-down menu. On the new notebook, import the necessary packages and load the environment variables in the file.emp which we created earlier in this video. You can get all market data like this. Just getting market data does not require an account on FTX. Basically, you just need to make get request to ftx.com slash api slash markets. Then uh, convert the result to JSON and later convert the JSON to Pandas data frame. You can also get single market data. For example, this is an example of getting BTC USD spot market data. So you just need to add BTC slash USD to the URL. You can also get historical data using the GET request. This is an example to get daily BTC USD market data since the 1st of January 2021. So you can use candles endpoint and specify the resolution in seconds. In this case, this is one day, which means 60 times 60 times 24 seconds. And then start time. The start time in this case the 1st of January 2021 and then get the JSON data and then it's converted to data frame and do some cleanup changing the time to date and do some cleanup and the result looks like this it is usually helpful to plot the historical data when analyzing it So this is an example to use Plotly to create a candlestick chart, which is commonly used to visualize price movement in the financial markets. So first create a graph object here, and then set up the layout, like titles and x-axis, y-axis, and so on. And then add candlestick chart, and then plot the chart here. Now let's look at how to trade on FTX using the REST API. We will look at how to create a client, place an order, and cancel the order. To trade on FTX, we need an account and perform the authentication using our API key and API secret. And this process can be tedious, but thanks to the sample code FTX has provided, we don't need to code the logic ourselves. So earlier in this video, we created an API key and the API secret, 
Then we have already loaded the values using python.env's load.env function. So we only need to pass these two values as arguments to create a client like this. You can place an order using the place underscore order function in the sample code. This is an example of placing a limit order to buy 0.0001 BTC at 90% of the current price. So first get the current price here, then place an order. Once the order has been placed successfully, you will get a message like this. You can cancel the order you've just made by specifying the order ID like this. If the order has not been filled yet, you should get a message like this which shows that the cancellation request has been successful. FTX is one of the largest exchanges where users can trade various digital assets such as cryptocurrencies, tokenized stocks, and derivatives. It provides a well-documented API and low trading fees, making it an excellent platform for algorithmic traders. In addition, it publishes a sample client code on GitHub to use the REST API in Python, so it is straightforward to build trading programs in Python. In this video, we looked at how to get current and historical market data, how to create a candlestick chart, how to place an order, how to cancel an order. I hope this video has helped you to get started with trading on FTX in Python. You can find more information about the API on the API documentation. That's it for this video. My name is Mikio, and thank you for watching.